Welcome back folks, my name is Last Snow Meal, and today we have some new info regarding the game in the most recent interview with Patrick Mills, a senior quest designer for the game, along with some other bonus stuff. As always, I will leave the link to the full article and the video of the interview down below, so check it out. First off, Patrick was asked about the inspiration behind the game, and we already know it's Blade Runner, Akira, Ghost in the Shell, but it's also inspired by the works of William Gibson, The Warriors, etc. Actually, there is a really nice easter egg Patrick talked about that he didn't even notice at first, and that is that the entrance to the afterlife is actually very similar to the start of Akira, so that is a cool little detail there. Also, in the game there is a clear reference to the Ghost in the Shell 2 Innocence, and we had seen um, developers actually reference Akira a lot, especially if you look at uh, Yaiba Kusanagi, the bike, it's really clear easter egg there. Besides that, Patrick also goes further to talk about inspiration for the gangs, saying this. Most of our gangs come directly from the source material, though obviously with a lot of tweaks. The Warriors is maybe the most obvious reference with campy urban gangs who dress alike and represent distinct subcultures. The work of William Gibson is of course hugely influential in this aspect. Think of Panther Moderns of Neuromancer and Low Techs of Johnny Mnemonic, and you have idea of what we're going for. Further down they talk more about the character of Johnny Silverhand, but one thing which kind of revealed itself out is that the scenes we have of Johnny are going to be short stories. At first we thought it was a brain dance in a sense, um, I still don't know how they will do it, but I think if we are actually going to control our character, it's not going to be brain dance in that sense, it's going to be an actual flashback to um, the most uh, historic events in the cyberpunk universe, especially the ones with Silverhand. He says that during one moment, Johnny riles up the crowd with a speech and music to storm the corporation. That corporation is Arasaka and the event is called the Arasaka Riot, where Johnny uses the people to breach into the offices and rescue Alt. Again, this is not a spoiler, this is the history of the lore. Again, not to be mistaken with Johnny storming Arasaka at the end of the fourth corporate war. Those are two separate events. Patrick also says an interesting thing regarding the choice of Keanu saying this. A character like that can't be played by anyone. It has to be someone who you can believe has that level of presence and charisma that people would throw themselves at armed guards for him. And this is absolutely true, it takes a great actor to portray a role like this, because Johnny has a very complicated personality, and generally, even though people consider him as a good guy, he's not a good guy. But he makes decisions based on the environment he grew up in. He was a soldier, that's what he knows how to do to fight. And he is also very emotional, that has been said by actually Mike Ponsmith. So overall, the character of Johnny is going to be extremely complicated in the game itself. Also a very funny anecdote is that at first Mike Pondsmith, the creator of Cyberpunk 2020 and the upcoming Cyberpunk Red, said at first that uh, Johnny should have blonde hair, but after he learned that it's Keanu playing him, he completely agreed. And yes, I do agree with this, because it's Keanu, if it was anyone else, and um, especially people who know the lore, you know, saw Johnny without blonde hair, they would be like, wait, 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 something's not right. But because it's actually um, Keanu, I don't think a lot of people even paid attention to that. Regarding DLCs, again, the same thing we knew, and that is to expect the same treatment as it was with The Witcher 3, so free DLCs, paid expansions. Regarding Refused becoming Samurai, Philip talks more about the decision behind it, because Refused is someone that can fill arenas, but they don't, they don't just do it. They, they It would be against um, their own beliefs in a sense, because yeah, every band is different, they have certain code they follow, and since both Adam Badovsky and P.T. Adamczyk, the composer working on the game, are huge fans, it was a natural decision to take them. Regarding the creation of the open world system and how those will work, Patrick Mills says that of course they are making activities and side missions that have deep personal story with extremely high quality and that they don't want to waste players time. And also they double down again on the player's choice where even the early decisions can dramatically change the outcome of the main story and its end. 
Also regarding the main quest, after the prologue I guess you can completely ignore it and do other stuff as Patrick says this. One of my favorite ways to play the game is to set my destination to a quest on the other side of the city and slowly make my way there on foot, taking in the sights and completing side activities on the way. This sounds great because I believe most of us will just walk around the city at first to take everything in. Now at the end there was also a question about the next Witcher but yeah that's way too early to even discuss with the devs right now. In the other news we also had a commercial for CP in Times Square, apparently it costs 2.5 million to have this up for 4 weeks which is an insane amount of money and some said that uh, because it's placed here the game won't be delayed again, I mean look I won't say it won't but why delay the game for 21 days and then again for whatever length, it's not a smart business move honestly if they wanted to delay for a month or two months or three months, it, that decision would have been made already. But this to kinda do it again after 21 days? No way. That would be a really bad decision for the company. We also had a collab between Adidas and Cyberpunk. If you remember, there was one version which was cancelled, but it seems it's back, but only in select Asian markets. Sadly, yes, but that's not CDPR decision, that's Adidas making decisions. Keep in mind, Adidas is kinda bigger, so they have the last say. And for the end, regarding Night's Wire, I don't want to speculate too much, but I expect the announcement either next week or something since we are getting closer to that new release day and of course they have a lot to show now but since the delay happened all plant marketing was probably moved a week or two so that's why you have this silence from the team on twitter and other socials overall that's all for today thank you so much for watching don't forget to tell me down below what you think about all of this and click that like and subscribe button for more cyberpunk news lore and explainer videos also join our growing community on Twitter and Discord, and I do have a Patreon page, if you were looking for an extra way to support the channel, you can do it through there, and huge thanks to my current Patreon supporters. This is LKM signing out, and stay classy everyone, bye bye.